Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a frame server. I'm going to show you how to render from Premiere or Media Encoder directly to FFmpeg. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and let me know in the comments what you think. Check the description for a link to some FFmpeg presets that I like to use for encoding my videos. So many times, whenever you're seeking maximum quality, you might render out to a AVI, but AVIs are huge. They take up so much space. Maybe what you're tempted to do is use H.264, which is built into Premiere and Adobe Media Encoder. And so rendering out to H.264 is pretty good. It's great for YouTube. And Premiere has lots of presets, as well as some YouTube presets. But I'll be completely honest with you, the YouTube presets just don't cut it for many scenarios. One of the things you'll notice is that the X264 codec provides you far more output options than you see here in Premiere or Media Encoder. So wouldn't it be cool if we could skip all of the extra steps and pull out a really nice quality video with all of the options and quality settings that we can find in FFmpeg? I found some great information online looking at the FFmpeg website. Uh, there is some information here on how to encode FFmpeg with Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, but it's a little bit outdated because uh, if you look at the workflow here using a frame server, which is what we're going to do, it tells you to use the debug mode frame server. But the debug frame server doesn't work. We're going to use this workflow, but instead we're going to download this, the advanced frame server. This works with Adobe Creative Cloud. And when you first go here, it's in Russian, but... Chrome will translate this for us. And here you just click on download the latest version. This is going to download from SourceForge and you can download and install this utility. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to install AVSynth. It is actually a frame server itself and it's going to make it really easy for us to make sure that we get the right color conversions and color space information for our final render. We're doing 32-bit, again, downloadable from SourceForge. Download and install that. And then finally, let's grab FFmpeg. What we're going to do is we're going to download the 32-bit version here. Click on that link, and it'll download it right to your disk. So now that we've got everything we need, how in the world can we set this up? First thing, make a new file. And I'm going to call it frameserver.avs. This is going to be a AVI synth file, and we're going to give it some very simple instructions. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it where the output file is, and it's going to be on my drive E in the folder temp, and I'm going to call it output.avi. The next thing I'm going to put here is a string that's going to convert my RGB color space to a YUV color space and I'm going to use YV24 and here in the matrix I'm going to go uh, REC709 so we're going to get the same colors that we would get if we were to use Adobe Media Encoder or Handbrake to do our encoding and there's many other settings uh, that I found work really really nice I'm not going to put these in here but just for example uh, just for reference we can use different color spaces so we get a lot of control over converting the color space. And let's keep it simple. It's actually really simple for me right now, just like this. These are the settings that work. So let's get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and save that file and close it. And that's just gonna stay right there. So let's check out FFmpeg. I'm gonna open this up and everything is already here and ready to go. And all I have to do is double click on ffprompt.bat. And this opens up the FFmpeg command line. Now, don't get scared just because it is a black command line window with a bunch of strange relics. Nothing to be afraid of. It's actually quite easy. Let's get started. So this video is ready to go. All I need to do is come up here to the menu and select advanced frame server. Uh, after you install this, it will show up on your list of export formats. Under the video tab, I choose RGB 24. My sample rate is going to be 48,000 Hertz. Here under the frame server options, 
This will be like a timeout when it's not rendering. It'll wait this many seconds before stopping the frame server. Prefetch media is selected. And I can do one of two things now. I can queue it up so that it goes to Adobe Media Encoder. It'll work there. Or I can just select Export. And as we know, when you export directly from Premiere, it exports a lot faster than it does when we add it to the Media Encoder queue. Now, before I click the Export button, I'm going to set the output to output.avi. And I'm gonna save it in the same location as I specified in my frameserver.avs here, etempoutput.avi. So I'm making it the same as this, where here's disk e temp output.avi save. And then I'm gonna click the export button and here the frame server is just waiting. Now that I have FFmpeg open and waiting, all we need are some FFmpeg commands to make this happen. Well, it turns out that I did some research and some tests. I made presets for YouTube. Now these presets in some ways go above and beyond Premiere's YouTube presets for H.264, uh, but not too far beyond. Uh, so here's some nice settings if I wanna go high quality 444 color space. Now I noticed that the 444 color space looks so much better than the 420 color space. It's much closer to what the original looks like. And so after seeing that difference, I really wanna push forward with the 444 color space. And all that means is that we're using a special profile that is not available in Handbrake and not available in Adobe, which is the high 444 profile. A little bit higher quality here, the preset I wanna use is gonna be slow with a CRF of 14 and a max bit rate of 30K. But uh, it's not gonna go up to 30K unless it needs to. For a low movement video, it's gonna stay really low. It'll be well below 30K so your files won't get too big. But here's the really awesome part about FFmpeg is that you can use these slow presets. This is something that Handbrake does that Adobe does not do, is let you choose the X264 preset. When you set it down to these slower presets, this is a huge deal when it comes to quality. Here, if you don't specify what the FPS is, it'll just match the FPS of the source. I'm going to specify the FPS to be 30. I've entered a parameter here that allows me to specify that speed. This is gonna be the source. The frameserver.avs is gonna be the source. And the output is specified here. This is where it's gonna save the file. And I can name this file uh, whatever I like. I'm just going to add something here. I'm gonna call it Stream Guide Episode 4. And I'm gonna leave some of this other stuff here to remind me which parameters I ended up going with. So I'm just gonna simply copy this information here and paste it over an FFmpeg. And now FFmpeg is beginning. And so if I go back here to the output directory, I can see that my stream guide episode four is here and it's building up. And here's Premiere's kind of proxy output file that we specified here. And it's not really doing anything. It's just acting as the frame server proxy file. Here's a previous video that I did with FFmpeg. And if I take a look at the media info, just for reference, it looks very much like the output directly from Premiere or Media Encoder. Uh, one of the biggest difference here is that it's using the high 444 profile, which I really like. It's nice to have those options. If you were to upload this video to YouTube at 444, uh, YouTube will take the file uh, with no problem. In fact, I've uploaded the last few videos that I've made with this chroma subsampling just to test it out and it seems to be working great. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know in the comments what you think. Check the description for a link to some FFmpeg presets that I like to use for encoding my videos. Good luck and have fun.